today I'm taking a look at Oatly. Oatly is uh, a milk alternative, I think. Feed well, no cows, the uh, merchandise says. Um, so it's a, it's a it's a milk type product made from oats, but it's not milk. But it tastes like milk. Well, that's what the advertising says. Oatly first came to my attention because my brother-in-law uses it quite uh, quite a fair old bit. Uh, he likes it in his cappuccino machine. So let's have a little look at the business and uh, and see what's been happening. So I'm going to have a quick look through the uh, 2021 financial presentation that uh, came out uh, last week. I'll give you a quick overview of, uh, of what's going on before going into uh, my version of the figures. So 2021 key financial highlights, record revenue production volumes in 2021 continue, with continued strong growth across the regions. Scale production across three continents at a record pace and opened three new facilities. And gained market share across key markets. And the number one selling oat milk skew and highest velocities across key markets. And Oatly is now available in 164,000 plus retail and food service locations globally. I had seen on quite a lot of the uh, the American sort of Discord chats about Oatly. They were a little bit suspicious about Oatly because it was well not very American, really. It's um, based in Malmo in Sweden. Um, Sweden, the home of Volvo and ABBA, and now Oatly. So uh, Americans were sceptical at first, but actually, if you look going through the figures here, it's uh, the, the European domination of Oatly is, is quite uh, dramatic, and it's something the, the Americans don't seem to have picked up on yet. But I think they will do in the next couple of years as we go through the presentation here. So 52% of the, the market uh, dominance or supply for Oatly is in, is in Europe, 28% uh, in America and 20% uh, in Asia, and a 53% growth in year-on-year -year revenue this year at 643 million. Pretty hefty. Okay. The presentation is very, very much about growth, 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 and, and more growth. All the graphs on here look to be going in the right direction. Here's the UK one with uh, the UK supermarket names, Tesco, Sainsbury's, Morrison's, Waitrose, Asda, Mercado. Name's not really familiar to the, uh, the Americans, but there we go. And then you look at the American market uh, with the American supermarket brands there with annual net sales growth, that's going up quite dramatically year on year. So uh, it, it really is starting to take off uh, right across the world. So that's uh, that's really great news. Uh, food service locations, a lot of big brands there are picking up on Oatly. And this is one of the major slides I wanted to show from the presentation, is the, uh, the plans really to have nine production facilities across the world by the end of 2023. So they've opened three in 2021. And uh, you can see on the uh, the world map there the, the plans for the additional sites coming up in the next couple of years. So they, they've got a big growth program ahead. So it's now time to have a look at my graph version of the uh, results over the last few years. So we're seeing in terms of the, the turnover, that's going up exponentially. We're seeing a nice growth in the gross profit going up nice and steadily there. And then there's this big minus here, the net profit. And it seems to be as the turnover goes up, the net profit is going down. Um, uh, to me, from my past business experience, that is not necessarily a very good sign. Assets and liabilities. Assets growing nice and healthily, um, very healthily. And uh, liabilities are staying, staying quite nicely in line there. So there's, there's not too much to worry about there. Free cash flow, however, is nothing but increasing minuses, getting bigger and bigger. Um, but that, I think, is really reflecting the uh, other growth down, graph down below, the capital expenditure, which is the complete opposite, going up and up and up. Uh, obviously, the capital expenditure layout with the planned new production facilities or additional facilities over the next couple of years will probably be increasing quite dramatically. So going across the share pad, let's have a look at the, uh, the share price. Um, I first got interested in Oatly when it was around about the $22 mark. I've seen my brother-in-law buying extensive quantities of the product. 
Uh, but since then, the the price has been sliding. I uh, do have shareholdings in uh, in Oatly. I started around the fifteen dollar mark, and from there it sort of slid down and down and down. And as I was making the video today, uh, the price has just dipped dipped under the the five dollars a share mark, uh, which is concerning. I think we're really sort of wondering how low can this share price go. Now, there has been quite a bit of share dilution over the last year or so as well, which of course is affecting the share price. Um, a lot of shorting on the stock as well, um, but that may also be reflecting if we we were looking back at my graph figures there, um, why they may be doing that because the if the turnover is soaring and the net profits is sinking, um, that would be a reason why the share price would be falling. So no idea what the bottom is likely to be on Oakley. Um, it is a high growth business um, in a few years time with all the production facilities fully on stream and the capital expenditure declining. Um, then this could turn into a very, very high profit value stock, potentially. But there may be some cash flow issues along the way. There may be some more uh, raising funds from the uh, the shareholders and dilution of stock. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. So look forward to seeing your comments in the comment section below, and we'll catch up with you again soon.